that had my name painted on it. It was chained to a post with a sign with a character of me that said, Pee Wee Herman only bike parking. And I looked at that bike, this is a true story, I looked at the bike and went, oh my God, I'm writing the wrong movie. I ran into the bungalow, I pulled, ripped the paper out of a typewriter and started typing Pee Wee Herman, his bike he loves more than anything. And we wrote the movie probably in three weeks after that. Wow. Uh, they can't make this stuff up. I wanted to just tell you really quickly also, just in case you don't know this story or you've heard one of the many, many false versions of this story, how Tim Burton wound up becoming the director of uh, his first feature of Pee Big Adventure. Here's the story. Um, I wrote the movie script, as I mentioned, with two other people. I turned the script into Warner Brothers and went on a vacation. Before I went on the vacation, this is pre-internet by quite some time, I got a book that was called Directors, and I made a list of 400 directors that were approved by me. They were people who, if they had been, if they had made one movie that I liked, they were on my list. If they had one great scene in a movie I liked, I put them on the list. Um, when I came back, after six weeks, Warner Brothers said, we want to make your movie, and here's the director, choice of one. This was a guy who was not on my list, and was a guy who had just made two movies that I thought were horrible. So, I kind of went out on a limb, and I said, no, I'm sorry, I just spent 15 years getting to this point, this is not the director of the movie, I'm sorry, it's going to ruin it, I can't do it. My managers took me outside, and I'll never, this is like it was yesterday, and this would have been 1984. How many people here were born after 1984? <laughs> yeah, good for you. Um, we, um, this guy had made two movies. I didn't think he was the right director. I said no, and like it was yesterday, I can remember my managers, two managers taking me outside and saying, do you even understand how show business works at all? Do you get any part of this? Because you have a green lit picture that you can be in pre-production tomorrow on. If you say no to this guy, you have nothing. And a week later, they may have a completely different head of the studio. Ironically, the heads of the studio, two heads of the studio, Terry Semmel and Bob Daly, I think hold the record for being the longest people in charge of a movie studio ever. And they were there for another like 100 years after Big Adventure. Um, so that really wouldn't have been, wasn't the case, but they scared me a little bit. And the studio said, we'll give you one week to find another director. And he has to be affordable, approvable, and available. The three A's. Available, affordable, what was the other one? Approvable. Thank you. Just want to see if you're paying attention. Uh, A plus. Um, so, I, um, I went to a party that night. I was in a comedy group called The Groundlings at the time. And I went to a, a kind of a groundling party and I frantically got up in every single person's face at the party and was like, you have no director. Anybody here know a director? I'm looking for a cool, young, hip director. Anybody know a director? And a girl that I knew very well, a girl named Mary Edith Burrell, who was a writer, actress in the Groundlings, turned around to me and went, oh my God, oh my God, Paul. Oh my God, I know who it is. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> so I was like, okay, who is it? She told me and then she said, she could barely get it out. Every couple words is, oh my God, oh my God. She said, oh my God, Paul, the movie star Shelley Duvall. You know Shelley Duvall. Call Shelley Duvall. So I get home from the party and call Shelley Duvall. I don't know if you know Shelley Duvall. She's an actress who kind of disappeared, but um, she was somebody who her entire life, people said, you know, you're an actress. If they ever make a movie of Popeye, you should be olive oil. And then they made a movie of Popeye and she was olive oil. <laughs> I love that story. Anyway, um, I called Shelley Duvall up and she did the same thing that the other girl did. I said, I'm looking for a, a, I have a Pee Wee movie, I'm looking for a director, and she went, oh my God, Paul, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, this is the guy, Paul, I'm in a movie, it's the guy, he's the guy. I finally got the guy's name, I screened Frank and Wayne the what? next morning. Um, that's the movie that Shelley Duvall was in and that this other lady had seen. And uh, I looked at it and honestly, this is a true story, probably 
one minute, a minute and a half, 30 seconds after the movie started, I knew he was the guy. Why did I know he was the guy? Because he understood art direction. I could tell from the first frame of the movie he was into art direction. Something that, to this day, if you go to a movie studio and you say, I'm going to make Phoebe's Big Adventure, I'm going to make X, Y, or Z movie, but I'm very interested in art direction, they will look at you and go, it's a comedy, right? And I said, yeah, it's a comedy. Well, then what do you need art direction for? It's true. That's what they said. Um, once they realized that art direction didn't cost anything, that it was free, then they weren't as upset by it, but they still, to this day, they don't get it. Studio people do not understand why art direction should be part of a comedy. Um, but I did. It was something that was really important to me, and I think it's what really makes Pee Wee's Big Adventure the movie that it is, um, is because of Tim Burton and his eye and his art direction. The movie was designed not by Tim Burton, by a gentleman named David Snyder. The bicycle in the movie was designed by Tim Burton and by David Snyder. Tim had a lot to do with the look of the movie, so did I. There are many props in the movie that I own that are in my house. Um, that's either scary or not scary, but, uh, <laughs> but it does look a lot like the movie house. <laughs> I'm sorry to say it sometimes. Um, anyway, and I love that story. That's the true story. And oh, I didn't, I didn't end the story. The story ends with um, uh, me looking at Frank and Weenie and going, this is the guy. Oh my God. Oh my God, Paul, this is the guy. And going back to Warner Brothers and saying, okay, I got the guy, Tim Burton. And they looked at me and laughed right in my face and said, Tim Burton, yeah, Tim Burton. We have been trying to get Tim Burton to direct a movie at Warner Brothers for the last year. He has passed on every script he's been sent. He's been sent every project in development here at Warner Brothers. Any project that's ready to shoot, he has passed on. We won't send it to him because he won't read it. Luckily for me, I had a manager who was very persistent and very capable, a guy named Richard Abramson, who got the script the same day to Tim Burton, who read it that day, and the very next day called Warner Brothers and me and said, I would love to direct you to Big Adventure. I'm very proud of this movie. I like it very much. I saw it fairly recently. Um, I'm a little older, but other than that, it's sort of the same. Um, <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. I've enjoyed like gabbing away here to you, even though I can't see you very good. Um, I hope you like the movie and um, keep riding.